with a title like Superheroes and Sidekicks, I'd at least be wearing a cape. <laughs> Instead, I'm showing you a diagram of an organizational structure. But bear with me. Organizational structures have been around since the industrial era. And um, they've barely changed at all in the following 100 years. They're a really neat way to organize people. They allow information to flow seamlessly up and decisions to flow seamlessly down. There's just one small problem. They don't work. I work on mega projects, things like um, the building the infrastructure for the Olympics, um, upgrading London's transport uh, system. And for me, projects look a little bit more like this. This is a social network analysis, and it was undertaken for the bank upgrade program um, by Professor Stephen Pryke at UCL. And when I first saw it, it was just a moment of, oh, that's my brain. <laughs> that's what I see when I walk into organizations. There were two findings out of that report that really struck me and resonated. The first one is that when you're working in these complex, hyper-connected organizations, the teams self-organize almost with complete disregard for the organizational hierarchy, the formal hierarchy. And the second piece of information that I found that made so much sense to me is that it changes over time. These, cha these teams just keep redeveloping depending on what challenge they're trying to solve. And different leaders step forward, again, outside of the formal hierarchy. So how do you work in this? How do you lead in a structure like this? How do you create change in a structure like this? Well, I've been learning the hard way for the last 20 years, and that's what I'm going to share with you today. It's a little bit like a game of Trivial Pursuit for me. I've been collecting snippets of knowledge along the way. Some of them I'm still to get but I'll share those with you. This one's the first one. What is your superpower? I remember really clearly when I won this piece. I'd just returned from maternity leave, a blissful nine months, and I walked into what was on paper, and actually in reality, a dream job, part-time working on the Olympics, delivering the 30-plus bridges that they needed in order to be able to release the site at Stratford. It was... It was about three months in, and I'm sitting there Tuesday afternoon, 5 p.m., doing the check on the watch in the meeting, thinking, I've got to pick her up from nursery. And the conversation in the room turned to bolts, and which type of bolt we should be using on a particular bridge. I just had a moment of, I'm in the wrong place. I shouldn't be here. They don't need my skills for knowing what the bolt is. And I've got much more important things to be doing back at home. So I went to my client and I said, I can't do it. I can't do this anymore. And he said something to me which has fundamentally changed the way I work ever since. He just asked, well, what can you do? It hadn't even occurred to me that I had a choice. I thought that you either did part-time working or full-time mothering. That was it. It was a couple of years ago. And so I went home and, and thought. And it made me think of um, a principle called Pareto's principle. And it says that there's 20% of what you do gives 80% of the value. So I thought, what's my 20%? What was I giving in that moment that, to that client? And that's what I offered him. And I worked somewhere between two, two and a half days around baby yoga, nursery pickups, and we're both perfectly happy with the arrangement. It had a fundamental impact. So what's my superpower? I'm a connector. I go into these networks and find out what's broken and reconnect them. So we move forward a couple of years. I now have the second child. I'm working out at Heathrow Airport. Um, and we had the crazy idea of building a grand design. <laughs> So my day went something like this. Wake up at 4 a.m., do an endless to-do list of what the guys on site would need to do, hop on my bike, 
cycle madly out to the airport, do a full day of work, at 3 p.m. jump back on my bike, cycle madly to nursery, pick up the girls, and happily bake and do crafts in the afternoon. <laughs> my cape was firmly fastened. It was all working beautifully. Up until the moment, it just didn't. We'd hit the wall on the cash flow. Anyone who's built a grand design knows this feeling. Um, and we had a problem with a crane that just wouldn't go onto site. And suddenly, my carefully structured days became somewhat more chaotic. And I had to do one of the hardest things I've ever done in my life. I had to ask for help. And the collective sigh of relief that went up from our friends and family told me I probably should have done that a little bit earlier. They dashed in and did incredible things, down to our site crew picking up the girls from school on a Friday and looking after them on site. <laughs> this didn't create me not being the superhero. This actually created a, a team of us who built this house, a community surrounding it who all felt that they had something to do with it. And it really gave me this strong sense of uh, that concept. You don't do these things on your own. You do them as a team. And actually, it's fundamental to understand which sidekicks you need around you in order to access your powers. And actually, to recognize that often you're the sidekick, that you're a sidekick in someone else's story, and to honor that, and to make sure there's space for that in your life, that you don't get lost in your own mission and leave other people stranded. The next one, I'm a management consultant. We can't get away from mission statements. Um, the next one is around just sort of value and purpose. And for me, I think this is sort of one of those things that you spend the vast majority of your life searching for. But the easier one is to talk about what's your core values. So when you're making decisions, when you're having to say no to things, because by saying yes, you're saying no to things that are really important to you, where do you do that from? Where are the core values that you're coming from when you make those decisions? And what's your purpose in life? For me, I'm passionate about changing the way we work so it's more human. So by the time my girls walk into that fishbowl we were speaking about earlier, it will be a cleaner fishbowl for them to be in. And also, it helps you with the next piece of knowledge. What is your mission? The moment that I figured this one out, oh, the relief. I, I, I always get told, oh, women, I'm in, I'm in the railways, so, you know, 4% female. So most of the blokes say, but you're a woman, you can multitask. I'm like, I obviously missed that memo. <laughs> I am the queen of the absolutely never-ending to-do list to the point where I hate opening up my app which has my to-do list in it to look at it. So it just becomes this horrific red thing on my thing where it says you've got 364 outstanding items you haven't done today. And you sort of atrophy to the point where you can't do anything. And I read a paper which said, as humans, we're not capable of thinking about more than two or three things or doing more than two or three things at a time. And it got me thinking around the concept, well, if I'm a superhero, don't I go on missions? And so possibly those missions are these two or three things that you choose to focus on. And so I, I every now and again, get up the courage to open up my to-do list. I look down it, I think about what my values and purpose are, and I think, which items on this list are my, my current missions? And then I close my to-do list, and I don't think about it again until I've achieved my missions. It completely changes the way you operate. I'd also say, when you go on a mission, remember to ask your sidekicks. Think about the times when you've gone off all guns blazing and forgotten about the person who possibly looks after the children at home or picks up that piece of work that you weren't doing because you've gone on a mission. Never forget your sidekicks. Continuous learning. We live in the era of so much access to exciting information. We are at a point of transition, a time when everything, we've been hearing all day about the, the potential disruption that's occurring. And there's so many uh, things I'd love to learn. I'm, I'm interested in AI, I want to learn blockchain, I want to know what immersive environments are, I want to create games with purpose, I'm so excited by everything. <laughs> and for me, the only way I can 
make sure I have, you know, use my 24 hours successfully is by thinking, well, actually, what are my missions at the moment? And what is the knowledge, skills, and technology I need in order to go on that particular mission? And if it means something really exciting, then I can do something really exciting. But actually, if AI isn't appropriate for that particular mission, possibly not. Might be good for my to-do list. And this is the final one. I'm still seeking this one. I'm hopeless at this one. Mind, body, and spirit. From my point of view, this is the one that I tend to think that I'll do between these amazing missions I go on. You know, when I get time, I will eat properly. When I get time, I'll do that exercise every single day. When I get time, I'll go out for coffee with a good friend and have a chat. I've been reading a book by Brené Brown, which is called Dare to Lead. And she talks about when she has to go on a, a book review, you know, going on one of these sort of campaigns out to talk to all sorts of people in libraries, etc. She does a boot camp. And at her boot camp, you know, she gets herself ready to go on this big mission. And she sees it as a fundamental part of achieving what she wants to achieve. So it's not self-indulgent to go and get a massage. It's not something to be done in between missions. You've, it's the, the idea of seeing it as something that you do in order to achieve your mission. I'm working on it. So, what does this have to do with those diagrams I showed at the beginning? Well, for me, I think, what would happen if organisations, instead of trying to fit you into one of those boxes, <coughs> thought about helping you complete your personal circle so that you can find your own place in those complex networks? Thank you. <laughs>